All right, guys, thank you for joining us today on Instinctive Addiction Archery. We've got a good one here for you today. We're bringing it real just like it is. Got a project going on that we want to really show you and kind of let you in on, on, on what we're doing today. Okay, so Daddy here, he's got, well, he had really lightweight arrows, okay? And, of course, after the last video and seeing what these over 500 grain arrows did, He's, of course, wanting to get heavier on the hunting weight because uh, we're just a believer in it, guys. We are, that you need to be over 500 grains for a hunting setup if you possibly can. Okay, his bow here, this is a, this is a, a 42 pound at 28 bow. This, this bow is actually 42 at 28. And we're figuring he's drawing somewhere around 39 to 40 pounds. So call it a 40 pound setup okay so how do we get to a 500 grain arrow well number one you have to kind of calculate what type of arrow you're going to go with he was shooting 600s out of this bow and great for 3d and and tournaments and all that shot awesome but to get over 500 grains we knew that one would have to go up a spine to run any heavier point weight so we went to a 500 we chose one of Big Jim's uh, dark timber arrows in a 500 spine, which is a little over eight grains per inch. And we're gonna try 100 grain brass inserts. And the reason we're sticking with 150 grain field tips, let me see here there. Okay, 150 grain field tips is what his setup is for a reason, because he already owns Magnus Stinger 150 grain buzz cut broadheads, which are proven and he loves, and he does not wanna have to change broadheads. So we had to figure, okay, what can we do to get over 500 grains on an arrow and stay with a 150 grain head? Well, we put 100 grain brass inserts in these dark timbers, which are a little over eight grains per inch. We came out with a naked shaft with a stock knock at 520 grains. We're good, okay? So now we're gonna bear shaft tune these with this higher FOC and see if we can get them to bear shaft uh, he's going to be shooting split finger. Now, guys, it makes a big difference when you're uh, bear shafting your arrows, whether you're shooting split or whether you're shooting three under, because you can shoot a bow, the same arrow, same knock set. You can put three fingers under and get a low knock reading and put uh, shoot it split and get a high. It makes a big difference how you hook the string and where as to what that arrow does. Yes, it does. Uh, I tried it last night just to see, and all three bows did the same thing. So anyway, uh, I went back to split finger shooting myself and I've got all mine set up with heavy arrows, uh, 650 grain arrows plus shooting split finger, okay? On all of my bows. So that's what he's gonna do with this bow pulling about 40 pounds. He's definitely not over 40 with a 520 grain arrow, which should be really good for him. So we're gonna do some bear shafting here and the blob target, which is a really good medium that won't lie to you. Wherever it goes, that's that's how it stays in there. Uh, you can't do it on a bag target. I know guys say you can. No, the bags will lie because when the air goes in, it goes all kind of different ways and you need a really good firm target to do bear shaft tuning with. So we're gonna try to get him set up so that he can shoot his Magnus heads on these airs here. So we're gonna start the bear shaft test now and see what we need to do to it because we don't know. You want to get even with it, as even as you can with your target and hold the bow vertical like a compound for testing. Okay, not bad. Not bad at all. All right. Just a tiny, tiny bit stiff. And we're gonna actually we're going to knock tune these to see if it makes any difference also. Shoot it one more time and pay attention to how the label is actually turned on the bow so we can duplicate it and we can knock, we can spin it and uh, knock tune it at the same time. And just make sure you come to full draw. Okay. Yeah, right and left's actually good. Uh, just a hair knock high. Mm -hmm. Just a little yeah, knock high. There it is. All right, so we're gonna try, we're gonna try going down with the knock just a little bit. We're gonna try going down to see if we can get it down. Sometimes 
if an arrow is ramping off the shelf, if the knock's too low, it will ramp off and give you a tail high reading. If that's not the case, you can go down with the knock just a little bit and level it off. So we're gonna try going down just a little bit. Turn it down just a little bit. Just a little. And it's close. I mean, it's, it's not bad. Not bad at all. I had a guy actually message me this morning, guys. On uh, he was having an issue with uh, he was shooting extreme heavy FOC on some shafts that he got, and he could not get the knock high out of it. Okay, and and I told him that you might have too much FOC for what your spine is. Okay, sure enough, he went up a spine, had another arrow, tested it, got it right on. Okay, so if the arrow's weak it's gonna be real sensitive to high front of center weight. In other words, you gotta make sure your shaft is stiff enough to begin with before you try to load a lot of front of center weight on an arrow, or they will tend to be knock high. All right. Which way did you have it turned? We can either shoot it the same way every time and then we'll, we'll <coughs> rotate it. Because knock tuning does make a difference on right and left, but right now we're showing pretty good. That actually is more. It's showing a little more, so it must be ramping. So we need to probably go up. Yeah. It got a, got a little bit worse. Let me grab that. It, we're a little more tail high than we were. So we're just gonna go up instead of down. And the initial, the initial knock set on this bow was a half inch. That's where he was shooting at a half inch. And it looks like I'm turning these a bunch, but on these triple T strings, guys, they're tied knocks, they ride the serving, and you have to really pinch them and turn them, and they barely move. I mean, it looks like you're moving it a lot, but you're not. It's very, very little movement at all. Okay. Shoot about level with where you're at, about mid mid target, you know, like on that left side. That that'll give you the truest read. Just level level it up. Well, that looks worse. Mm -hmm. Yep. So maybe we do need to go down. And all you're gonna figure that out with is by doing it, by moving it and playing with it. So. It did actually get worse going up higher. Because typically, once you go down below a half inch, you'll start getting knocked low. And as you barely creep up till it levels off, that's the magic spot, which is usually between a half and five eighths of an inch above center, okay? Normal. If you go too low, it will start ramping and give you a tail high effect This is probably just below where we had it initially here. Yeah, let me see your shaft. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, it should be good. Turn it out the same way. There you go. That should be just barely below where we is at. Completely grim. <laughs> Better. There you go. It's level. Now, you see it, it's tail right. Mm -hmm. You may not have drawn it quite as far and put quite as much energy in, but that is level. Up and down is perfect now. But as you can see, going up to that 500, if you short draw any at all, you're going to be stiff. You got you got to get full draw on it, but that cured it wherever wherever that knock we'll measure it and see on the square but it did not shoot knock high all we did was go down we're probably just right close to a half inch if that definitely not over a half inch above center shooting split finger three under you're going to shoot a little bit higher knock set than you will split that's just how they're going to tune yeah now i'll just try Bigger on in. There you 
you go. Much better. Much better. Yeah. Let me try it one time with bare fingers. Sometimes you can do it bare fingers without a glove and get a real accurate reading on one because your glove can affect it a little bit, especially if your glove's loose at all. All right, just a hair knock high with me. Right and left perfect, okay? I'm still gonna go down just a hair and I didn't, I'd probably do just a little further than you. But I'm gonna go just a little see see if it gets perfect we want it perfect it's perfect because we can get it and it's not bad at all right now it's really good well it's quiet isn't it? it's real quiet yeah you put some weight on these bows they really get quiet this bow is already extremely quiet but it is sure enough now there we go that's definitely good i mean <laughs> That's good, I promise you. Now I've got a fletched arrow. Now his length, you might say, well, how did you know how to even start with? Well, his arrows were cut 28 inches carbon to carbon before. That's the length he likes, that's what he's used to shooting. We did the same thing with these. We took some that were 28 inches. We had a multitude of arrows in the shop and we had these dark timbers, big gem arrows, 500 spine that were cut 28 inches already. And all we did was put 100 grain inserts and 150 grain tips. Matter of fact, uh, this one, you got 150 grain tip, this is a 175. Won't make any difference on the flip. The other one does. Yeah. It's got a 150. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I got a Shoot an identical error with a feather. Oh, yeah. Looked like it flew great to me. Definitely did. Uh, and there again, on uh, on bear shafting, guys, they don't have to be perfect, just good. I mean, within if you get one this close, believe me, it's gonna fly. Th those fletchings are gonna they're gonna correct it within the first eight to ten yards maximum. I mean, I don't think it even takes that much for the for the fletchings to actually correct an error. That's why so many people shoot real poorly tuned bows and think they're good because shooting field tips they look good. But you put a broadhead on, and that's when it tells. So you got to have that bear shaft really, really close to know for sure that your broadheads are going to fly right. So I can about guarantee you this setup is going to be T totally awesome, guys. I mean, that that is, they're straight. They're good. So he's ready. 520 green arrows, that's ready to go. Uh, I just want to say, Years ago, when I started shooting these recurves and longbows, I shot heavy arrows just like this. Mm -hmm. I shot bare 308 magnums, which I think equal out to a 2013 lunum shaft. Probably. And I killed several deer with them. But as time went on, <laughs> everybody seemed like wanted speed. Speed. Lighter arrows. That started like in the late 80s it and 90s. Did. The 90s were the speed era. It's, it all, that's all everybody cared about was how fast their bow was. But you owe it to the deer mm -hmm. to make the best shot you can make. Plus, you want to have you enough air that's going to either blow through that deer mm -hmm. or if it don't go all the way through, when he runs and starts hitting limbs, it's going to cut him up like it's supposed to. Yeah. Yeah, and sometimes <clears> it's <throat> even better. I mean, if you think about it, if you get this much penetration inside the cavity and that broadhead's in there and that deer's running and that arrow's hitting trees and everything, it's just grinding him up. I mean, it's it's it probably more deadly than a pass-through. It's just when you get that exit wound, you get more blood trail to follow, but hopefully they fall with inside of where you shot them and that's even better. So yeah, it, it is. But I, I this last test that we did, in case you didn't watch the video, um, it, it's, it's our penetration test. Uh, anything from a 350 grain arrow to a 680 grain arrow and, and anything under 500 grains just just didn't do too well some completely failed and consistently arrows over 500 grains were shooting through the plywood field tip and broadhead so it, it just with a 43 pound bow now you know you might could get more penetration if you're shooting heavy pounds but most people are not 
most trad hunters now are shooting what 35 to 45 pounds pretty much um uh, you know i shoot mid to upper 40s on all mine but you know everybody starts having shoulder problems and this and that and the other and and you know you just seem to want to back down on your weight and shoot comfortable so you got to build an arrow that's going to work for you that you can still take a 40 pound bow to the woods and kill deer with it there's been many a 40 pound 43 pound deer killed with lawnmower and recurves oh yeah it don't have to be a 70 pound bow no i mean really mm -mm. sharp broadheads sharp that's broad it and good shot placement too yeah. <laughs> that's it yeah. that's it so thank y'all for joining us on instinctive addiction archery i'm jeff phillips this is my daddy tommy phillips and uh, we just love you so much and pray that everything that we say and do bring honor and glory to the good lord that gives us all this stuff to enjoy and uh, pray you guys have a good week and thank you for joining us. Amen. Goodbye. Yeah, that's cool. Hope we done it good.